Hey guys, welcome back to another video! In today's video, we're continuing down our list of the 50 best horror movies that you've never seen with number 46 for us, but number 45 on the list, Grace. Grace came out in 2009, making it one of the more recent movies on the list, and it was directed and written by Paul Solit. For a quick synopsis of the movie, it's about the Matheson family trying to conceive a child. We learn a little bit later into the movie that they did have two other attempts that led to miscarriages, so the conception of their third child is a big deal for the family. Madeline does have a few complications um, just because of the previous miscarriages. So the beginning of the movie showcases this kind of setting up suspense of you're not really sure what's going to happen. The family ends up getting into a car crash which kills the father almost instantly, leaving Madeline by herself. Someone ends up finding her on the side of the road and she is starting to bleed and she's saying I can't feel her kicking. Madeline was about three weeks out from her due date whenever this car wreck happened and it unfortunately did end up killing the child. But instead of getting medically induced, Madeline chooses to carry the baby for the rest of the term, holding on to the hope that her child is still alive. Upon giving birth to the stillborn child, Madeline starts to coax her to please wake up, please don't be gone from me. It's very upsetting and heartbreaking, especially for anyone who has lost a child. And upon some weird miracle that we don't really get an explanation for, Madeline's child starts to breathe and ends up coming back to life. So Madeline takes this as a sign and it gives her the name Grace. But weird things start happening with Grace. She's not breastfeeding, she's not taking any formula, and Madeline, who has just lost her husband and thought she lost her child who miraculously came back to life, isn't really in the best state of mind, but starts to find out that her baby needs something a little bit different than other babies. Madeline finds out the hard way that her baby doesn't need breast milk to survive, she needs human blood. When Madeline tries breastfeeding Grace, she starts to chew on her nipple, causing her to bleed, and Madeline discovers that Grace is drinking her own blood. And as a desperate mother, she continues to let her baby feed off of her own blood, taking supplements to try to replace the blood that she's losing. But the mother-in-law of her late husband starts to catch on that she's not letting her come over, she's not letting her see the baby, so she sends a doctor out there and things kind of take a turn for the worse. Uh, Madeline ends up killing the doctor and feeding his blood to her baby, and whenever the mother-in-law shows up at the house to see what's happening, she also ends up getting attacked by Madeline. Now, when I first watched this movie, I was really impressed with the story. It was something I had never really seen or heard before, um, but upon my second rewatch, I realized that this movie has a lot of issues. Paul Solet is the director and writer of this movie, and it's based off of a short film he had done three years prior. And again, just like we had with Stranger Calls, this is one of those cases where maybe it should have just stayed as a short. I was reading a lot of reviews for this movie and anyone who saw the short says that it is better than the feature length film and that the film has just a lot of filler in it, things that don't make sense or don't really help the story go along. There's a lot of just really long drawn out shots that feel unnecessary to the film. And the film doesn't have a really big musical score, it really only picks up towards the end when things get intense, so the beginning is very slow and there's no music. It's just quiet, you're in the house with Madeline and her baby. It's very solemn just because of the loss of her husband. The movie does give you a sense of being cooped up along with the mother at her house, and you do feel it just as paranoid and stressed as Madeline does watching her try to take care of this child. But there are a lot of scenes in between that that just don't feel necessary. And there were a few storylines that they set up that really didn't make sense or didn't really have a good conclusion. Uh, Madeline is a vegan and very adamant about this and eating healthy. She watches a lot of those documentaries about how um, animals are treated in those meat plants and she criticizes her husband's parents for eating meat and trying to feed it to her and the parents criticize her for not being being able to properly feed the baby. It's a whole thing that they set up in the beginning and it's kind of ironic that Madeline ends up having to kill someone and feed the blood to her child and so you got, get a little bit of that irony but it feels almost like an idea that was strong in the beginning and then kind of petered out towards the end. And another weird kind of side storyline that they set up was the fact that Madeline, who tells her husband, I want to go to a midwife, considering the fact that she lost her other two children by going to a hospital, she ends up going to this midwife that she talks about highly, she says that she got a lot of great reviews, and then we find out 30 minutes into the movie that the midwife Patricia and Madeline used to be a couple, um, and we don't get really any backstory, you just see Patricia in her office holding a photo of her and Madeline, and her assistant comes in and is just like, let it go, it was years ago, and Patricia's like, oh yeah, but I love her, it's weird. It's weird, and we 30 minutes in we find this out that they were a couple, but Madeline doesn't tell it to her husband, and like acts like she's never met Patricia whenever we first see them interact. 
So it's just this weird side story and Patricia becomes like obsessed with Madeline Especially after watching her give birth to a stillborn and then it comes back to life She's constantly trying to check up on Madeline Madeline's calling her and her assistants like blocking the phone calls and not giving the messages to Patricia And then Patricia at the end comes in and finds that Madeline had killed the doctor Had to attack her mother-in-law Vivian Vivian attacked Madeline so Madeline was bleeding And Patricia comes in just kind of like takes Madeline and the baby and leaves and then they end up in a van driving across the country and this movie ends with Patricia parking the van in like a gas station and like she goes to the back of it and there's Madeline with Grace there's like blood everywhere Grace is like eating Madeline's boob essentially and she's like oh she's getting bigger like I can't keep feeding her and then the movie just ends just ends with them in the back of his RV talking about how Grace is getting too big for Madeline to continue to feed her so you don't know if they're like a couple again or if they're gonna go start killing random people to feed grace you don't know like you just don't have an idea of what their story is and you also have no idea why grace is the way that grace is madeline gives birth to her as a stillborn and then is just crying and you know holding her it's a very emotional scene willing her baby to come back to life so like begging her please don't leave me please don't go and then just miraculously Grace starts to cry and now she's breastfeeding her and like Patricia runs in and it's just like, you can't will a baby back to life. And Madeline's like, yes I can, look at her, it's Grace. So we don't really get an explanation as to why Grace came back. And Grace starts to have like weird things happening such as like flies are really attracted to her. She prefers like the dim dark lighting. She starts to drink the blood of Madeline. Like it's almost like it's gonna be like a devil, like satanic baby, like the exorcist with the flies on the window or something like that omen or rosemary's baby but grace doesn't do anything spectacular other than needs blood to live like grace doesn't do anything she doesn't kill anything you know you almost expect they have a family cat you almost expect the cat to get eaten by the baby but no the cat just brings the baby like dead rats to drink the blood of it's weird. You don't get an explanation for really anything. We don't know any of Patricia and Madeline's backstory as a couple. We just know that they dated. We have no idea why they broke up or what happened. So that's already two parts of the movie that we don't have backstories for. We don't know why Madeline and Patricia got together, and we don't know what brought Grace back to life. And Grace doesn't seem to have any like spectacular powers or any like supernatural thing about her other than that she was dead now she's not and now she needs blood to live and another weird like side story thing that was a part of this was the mother-in-law vivian vivian is a super obsessive mother over her son and when losing him in the car crash like goes completely off the handle and she starts to like every time you see her she's in her son's room which looks just like it did when he was like 10 years old and she starts like stimulating her nipples and trying to get herself to breastfeed again and she does because in the movie the they're all like, oh, if you keep your nipples stimulated, you can breastfeed well into your 60s. And so like Vivian starts to try to get herself to breastfeed. She makes her husband like suck on her nipples. It's weird. It's weird. Vivian has her own shit going on that you're like, this is creepy in a horror movie in of itself. And she becomes obsessed with getting um, custody of Grace because she believes that Madeline is neglecting her, not knowing that Madeline's doing everything she can to keep her bloodthirsty baby alive. Um, and Vivian sends a doctor over to Madeline to check on her to deem her unfit to be in custody of a child, which would then give Vivian the ability to take Grace considering the fact that Vivian is the grandmother of the baby. Now the doctor's kind of creepy. He doesn't do anything like bad, but you just get a weird vibe from him. Like he just makes me uncomfortable. And he goes to the house and is doing an exam on uh, Madeline. And whenever Grace starts to cry over the baby monitor, he's like, oh, that baby is sick. You can't take care of her. And he starts going upstairs and Madeline like horrified that he's gonna realize that she's been feeding her baby blood and how bad that looks. Ends up smashing his head in and drags him into the bathroom and cuts his veins open and starts draining his blood for Grace. And I see like the little bit of irony they were trying to go for there because she's like this vegan who's very anti-animal cruelty. And now here she is having to drain the blood of an animal um, like a human and giving it to her kid. So I don't know if the story is supposed to be about veganism and about that Like again, there's just so many like subplots going on It's hard to know which one you're supposed to follow and like this movie could also just be about motherly love And the lengths of which a mother would go to to do anything for their child Which is admirable and I'm sure any mother would agree that they would do anything for their kid Including murdering a guy if their baby needed blood I don't really know. I don't know. Um, I didn't really know what the theme was for this movie and reading a lot of the reviews, people seem just as confused as I was. 
Um, it's a gory movie. The gore is great in it. There's so much blood and when she has the scissors and she's like cutting into the doctor's arm, you're like, oh, like it's gross. It's nasty. You feel just as gross as Madeline does doing it. But again, as I said in the movie The Dentist, Gore does not make up for a shitty story. So I get what this movie was going for in the sense of like a really intense, upsetting movie about a woman who just wants to be a mother and when finally given that chance is willing to accept her baby no matter what's wrong with it. It just sort of feels like a hard movie to follow in some sense. And I really enjoyed it when I first watched it because it was something I'd never seen before. But like I said, upon watching it again, honestly, I was bored. I actually fell asleep halfway through and had to finish the movie the next day because I was watching it and there were so many slow drawn out scenes and I'd already seen the movie, I already knew what happened. So watching it again, I was like, oh, this does not have rewatchability. At least for me, it doesn't. I mean, some other people might really enjoy the storyline, um, but to me, it's not the kind of movie that I could watch over and over again. I mean, even my boyfriend who is terrified of horror movies was like, I'm bored halfway through. He was like, I, he's like, this is just a boring movie. But like I said, there is a lot of really good gore. I wasn't able to find a lot of behind the scenes about this movie. There really isn't much information out there. I think it did get released in theaters, but it wasn't out for very long. It's not a really well-known movie, hence why it's on the list. But the gore was really good. It was very bloody. It was very nice. And it had, it, if you're, if you have an issue with blood or blood really does gross you out, this movie will do the trick. Um, but once you've seen it and you know what's happening, you lose the shock value, which is what made it, I think, so good for me in the beginning. But now that I know what's gonna happen, like, the biggest shock value for me was when she cut open the doctor's veins. But now knowing that that was gonna happen, I was able to watch it again, like, okay, yeah, that was cool. That was bloody. What next, you know? But for the gore rating, I will give this movie a gore just rating. It has some gross parts. It's got really good blood. You you know, you have a baby that's drinking blood and she's like chewing on the nipple of her mom. There are, there are good effects in that sense. There isn't a lot of special effects just because this movie does take place mainly inside of Madeline's home and she's just trying to survive with her baby Grace. So there really isn't a lot of action and gore, but what they do show is good and I give them props for that. But do I really feel like this movie deserves to be on the list? Ah, uh, upon rewatching, I gotta say no. I mean, my boyfriend was like, no, this movie doesn't deserve to be on there. And that's a pretty big deal coming from him, considering the fact that he's a little bit of a baby when it comes to horror movies. So for him not to even be interested or remotely freaked out is not a good sign. So I would say this movie probably doesn't need to be on the list. It's one of the more recent movies on the list, which made me think it would be one of the better ones, because you know, like the effects would be a little bit better. But even like The Dentist had a little bit of rewatchability if you wanted to watch with your friends and laugh. This isn't the kind of movie that you watch and laugh with friends. And it's not really the kind of movie that I want to rewatch over and over again. It's kind of once you see it, you get it, you know? And and sometimes the behind the scenes things is what really saves a movie for me. But considering the fact that I couldn't really find much on this movie, like there just doesn't appear to be anyone interested in knowing about the behind the scenes. I really have nothing to save this movie. So I think it does not deserve to be on the list. But I'd love to know what you guys think. Have you seen this movie? What was your first reaction? And if you rewatched it, what did you think the second time? Were you just as lost with some of those storylines as I was? Let me know down below in the comments or head over to my Instagram, What a Horror. I'll be making a post about this video as well. But I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more. I put out new videos every Friday. And until next time, stay spooky.